Hey, wellness crew. So my remote went bust today. <laughs> so I have to manually uh, start and stop the video. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to Yoga with Jenna. I am so grateful that you are here and ready to do this practice. I definitely love the longer form sessions of yoga just because I feel like you can get so much accomplished. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and start in a crescent lunge or just a lunge. Um, depending on how you want your hands to be, doesn't matter to me. You can have them as if we're in mountain pose. You can have them out to the side or you can have them up in the traditional crescent lunge. I'm going to go ahead and have my hands in the mountain pose position. From here, we're going to go ahead and step forward with that left leg. We're going to go ahead and come back with that right leg to get into a lunge on the left side. Again, however you want your hands to be, no worries. And I do apologize for <laughs> any potential background noise you might hear. Um, typically, I do have the water fountain on, <laughs> but um, I think it's out of water <laughs> for right now. So that usually will kind of mask <laughs> the uh, background noise a bit. And stepping forward. Going ahead and stepping back with that left foot to come into a lunge on our right side. Really focusing on your breath. Here today in Texas, it is like allergy crazy. <laughs> so my breath sounds a little weird today. <laughs> And going ahead and stepping forward, we're gonna go ahead and step that right leg back. <laughs> and stepping that right leg forward, stepping the left leg back. The front leg, of course, the lunge position. So the front leg is bent. The back leg is pretty straight. <laughs> and stepping forward and stepping that right foot back. And stepping forward, stepping that left foot back. Stepping that left foot forward and stepping that right foot back. I think anyone whose child has an oculus can relate. <laughs> and stepping forward, coming into mountain position. Taking three nice, full, deep breaths in this position. And going ahead and falling forward into a forward fold. Just 
stepping our feet back so we can come into plank position. From here, we're going to go ahead and bend our elbows and we're going to get into hovering. Only the palms of our hands, our toes, and the balls of our feet are in contact with the mat. No other part of our body is touching the mat. Coming forward for upward dog, trying to keep our shoulders down from our ears as much as possible. Tucking our toes underneath so we can get into downward dog. Really pushing through those palms. Trying to get our heels as close to the mat as possible. Relaxing the neck. Stepping forward, the other foot meets it, forward fold. Coming half ways, coming back down into that forward fold. And slowly rolling up. Going ahead, coming into mountain pose after my hair flip. <laughs> Stepping our left leg back to come into a lunge on our right leg. Stepping that left foot forward and stepping the right leg back. Stepping the right leg forward, left foot back. Stepping the left foot forward, stepping the right foot back. Stepping the right foot forward and coming into mountain pose. Three deep breaths here. and falling forward into a forward fold. Relaxing the neck. Stepping our legs back so we can come into plank. Then bending our elbows to come into hovering. Coming into upward dog. <laughs> Trying to keep our shoulders down and away from our ears.
tucking our toes underneath so we can get into downward dog. Really pushing through those palms. Stepping one foot forward, the other foot meets it, forward fold. Coming up into your half ways, if my necklace doesn't choke me out. <laughs> Coming back down into forward fold. And slowly rolling up. Coming into mountain pose. Taking three deep breaths. We're gonna go ahead, step that left leg back so we can get into a lunge on our right leg. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my arms out to the side with the palms facing up. Stepping that foot forward, stepping back with our right foot. And everything is a little bit more slowed down today, right? Because I really want us to be able to get into our bodies, to really feel these positions, these movements, to really just bring about body awareness. Stepping the right foot forward, stepping the left foot back. Stepping that left leg forward and then stepping the right foot back. Stepping that right foot forward, coming into mountain pose. And going ahead and falling forward into a forward fold. <laughs> All right, stepping our feet back so we can get into plank. And something that I sometimes have a bad habit about is trying to keep my spine neutral. So you wanna aim for that. You don't wanna be looking down too much. You don't wanna be looking up because what's gonna happen, your stomach's gonna sag down. For certain movements and flows, that's okay, but in this position, I really want a neutral spine as much as possible. Coming down into hovering. Coming into Upward Dog. Tucking our toes underneath for Downward Dog. <laughs> I'm 
Really pushing through your palms. Relaxing that neck, getting a nice deep stretch. Trying to push our heels towards the mat. My necklace is trying, <laughs> my necklace was just trying to joke me out again, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, stepping one foot forward. The other one meets it, forward fold. From here, we're gonna bend our knees just slightly and we're gonna reverse swan dive up. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into the warrior positions. So we're gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do is for my right leg, I'll be on the purple mat. For my left leg, I'll be on the pink, so that way you can see it from both angles. So warrior one, we have our arms up nice and straight. Warrior two, we're gonna go ahead and slide that back foot out a little bit, trying to have our torso, our hips facing the side while we're looking towards our right hand. And sometimes when we get here in warrior two, we forget to keep that knee bent. I know I make that mistake a lot. Going ahead, reaching under, well, not underneath, but turning our palm upwards towards the sky and then having our arm come on over us. If you would like, you can do a bind with your left arm coming around your thigh. Coming back into warrior two. and into warrior one. Stepping forward to come into mountain pose. And we're gonna go ahead, get ready for warrior three. So bringing our arms up above us, extending that left foot, leg back. Coming back up. And now we will go on the left hand side. And like I said, I'm gonna do it on the pink mat just so that way you can see it from both angles. So beginning in warrior one, sorry, I'm sweaty and my <laughs> hair is sticking to me. So we're extending our arms up nice and straight. That front knee is bent. The right leg is pretty straight behind us. Coming into warrior two, turning that foot to facing um, what would be forwards, right? Because of our body, trying to have our hips and everything whoop, <laughs> um, facing forward. But we're going to go ahead and look to our left arm or actually probably the end of our middle finger. That's probably better.
turning our palm to face the sky, reaching over our head for reverse warrior. If you want, you can try to do that bind. You can be looking up, but if that makes you dizzy, you can kind of look like at an angle forward. <laughs> Coming back into Warrior Two. And back into Warrior One. My legs are shaking. <laughs> And coming forward into warrior just briefly. Coming into warrior three on the left leg. So extending our arms up, bringing that right leg back. And coming back up, we're going to go ahead, do some shoulder rolls. Let me fix this camera a little bit. I think it might be a little low. There we go. <laughs> okay. So some nice shoulder rolls. And forward. And going ahead and starting with warrior one on our right leg. And what I should have said earlier is the back foot, so in this case our left foot, right? It should be actually angled out about 45 degrees-ish. <laughs> what I was doing earlier was a straight up lunge. <laughs> at least when I came to the right side. From there, having that left foot facing forward the way that we want our body to face, all we're gonna do is look to our right hand Going ahead, turning our palm underneath. We're gonna go ahead and reach over and back for reverse warrior. Again, if you want to do that bind or if you see that you can do it deeper, hooray, <laughs> awesome. Coming back into warrior two, making sure that our body is facing front and just our head is turning. And then coming into warrior one. So we definitely have to adjust the back foot, right? From where it was for warrior two. Going ahead, stepping forward, coming into mountain. And then coming on to our right leg, extending our arms up, bringing that left leg behind us and coming into warrior three.
Coming right back up, lowering our arms. <laughs> and now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the left leg. So having our left leg forward, our right foot back, angled at about 45 degrees, trying to have our body facing as much as we can, right? That might mean that you have to move your foot in a little bit more. It just depends on your mobility. <laughs> it's the biggest thing. So reaching up nice and high. Remembering to bend that knee. <laughs> Coming in to warrior two, our body facing forward, and just looking to our left hand or our left finger. I always suggest the middle finger only because it is typically <laughs> the longest uh, finger on our hand. Turning our palm to face the sky, reaching and reaching overhead. If you want to try that bind, you can. Where your right hand is coming behind your back and onto your thigh. And again, you can try to look directly up. I always think the crease of the elbow is probably a good way to go. Or you can kind of look forward, but at an angle. Coming back into warrior two. Coming back into warrior one. <laughs> that left leg is shaking again. Stepping forward into mountain pose. And then going ahead, getting on that left foot, bringing that right leg behind you, bringing your arms up to get into warrior three. Coming down. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Going ahead, rolling our shoulders back. Then rolling our shoulders forward. Leg shake be damned. We're going to go ahead and bring our feet wide and out with our toes facing out, kind of like we're in sun pose, okay? But what we're going to do is depending on your balance and what you're comfortable with. You can have your hands out like that in like we're in sun pose. You can also have your arms in a circle in front of you, coming onto your toes and coming back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my feet in just a little bit closer because, there we go, and down. And down, <laughs> and down, down, and down, <laughs> and down. The shakes are getting me today. And down, and down, and down, and down. And down, whoa, and down, and down, and down. We're gonna go ahead, bring our toes forward, 
we're going to hinge from the hip, coming down into a straddle forward fold. I'm going to do the hanging version of it. So my hands are on my elbows, kind of like in a cradle position. If you do need a little bit of a bend in the knee, that is totally okay. We're going to go ahead and bring it to our right leg, trying to bring our nose to our knee. And we're going to go ahead and come to the left leg, again trying to bring our nose to our knee. And from there we're going to go ahead and bring our palms to the mat, staying in the straddle forward fold position. And we're going to hinge up from our waist and come into a seated position first. <laughs> this sweat, the sweat as my hair is sticking to went majorly today. Okay, so seated, right? Now we're going to go ahead and come into the supine position. So what I want us to start with is just by lifting up our right leg bringing it out, bringing it in, and bringing it down. Lifting the left leg, bringing it out, bringing it up, and bringing it down. Okay, good, my microphone's still on. <laughs> bringing it up, bringing it out, bringing it in, down, bringing that left foot up, bringing it out, bringing it in and down, out, down, out, down, out, and down, out, down, out, down, <laughs> out, and down, out, and down, out, and down, out, down, out, and down. We're going to go ahead and come up into a saddle position. We're going to go ahead and bring our palms behind us. Our fingers are going to be facing our toes. We're going to get a nice quad stretch by lifting our bottom up. Bringing our bottom back down into a seated saddle position. 
Let me move to this mat. You're staying in the seated saddle position. And what we're gonna do is have our right arm come underneath, our left arm on top, doing that eagle position with our arms. And the higher you raise your elbows, the more of a stretch you're gonna feel. And we're gonna go ahead and switch sides. So the left arm is underneath and the right arm is on top. Trying to have the palms meet as best as they can. Again, it just depends on your mobility. <laughs> Releasing the arms having them come back and around interlacing those fingers. We're gonna go ahead and bring the very top of our head, so the crown of our head to our mat. We're gonna bring those arms back as much as we can. I'm just super sweaty. <laughs> so basically bringing our hands like towards our neck. Lowering them back down to our lower back, bringing our palms to our sides. Now my necklace wants me to eat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then from there, what we're gonna do is come into saddle, into full saddle. So again, sitting in between our feet, we're gonna come back onto our forearms, If this is enough for you, by all means, stay right here. But if you want a little bit more, we're gonna go ahead and come onto our back, having our palms facing flat down on the mat. Nice deep breaths. Going ahead, getting on to our elbows so we can get back onto our forearms. And from our forearms, we can push up to get back into saddle just briefly. We're gonna go ahead and bring our right leg forward, extending our left leg back so we can get into pigeon position. Let me scoot back a little bit. So you can start with being on the palms of your hands. If that's not challenging enough, you can go ahead and come onto your forearms. And if that still isn't challenging enough, you can extend your arms out, bringing your forehead to the mat.
And going ahead, and if your arms are extended, walking them in, bringing that right leg back, doing some kicks and movements to kind of bring the, not so much bringing the blood back, but <laughs> okay. Then we're gonna go ahead, bring that left leg forward, knee bent, our right leg is back behind us. Again, starting on your palms if you're new to pigeon pose. If you need a little bit more, coming on to your forearms. And if that's still not enough, extending your arms straight out, palms facing down, forehead on the mat. And if your arms are extended, walking them in, going ahead, bringing that left leg back, kind of kicking it out and around, playing around with it. We're gonna go ahead and get back into downward dog, pushing through those palms, relaxing the neck. My necklace is trying to kill me, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, it really is. Coming into plank. Coming into hovering. Coming into Upward Dog. Tucking our toes underneath to get back into that Downward Dog again. Going ahead, bending your knees, opening them up so we can get into child's pose. And then going ahead and coming into Shavasana. So we're extending our feet, nice, or our legs, I should say, nice and straight. We are having our palms facing up to be in the receiving position for whatever it is our higher power or the universe wants to provide to us. Breathing nice and deep. And 
Noticing any changes that you may feel in your body. Maybe a lack of tension. And being grateful for the opportunity to do this practice, being grateful to yourself for doing this practice, for having the willpower, for having the dedication, especially if you've been following my videos. I'm not going to name specifically who it is, but there was someone that let me know that they were having or they were recovering from a back injury or back surgery. So this practice was made with them specifically in mind, and I think they know who they are. <laughs> Being conscious and aware of your body. Taking nice deep breaths. And having your exhalations be longer than your inhalations. a little hack for the parasympathetic nervous system. Extending our arm out, bending our knees, coming onto our side and coming into a sitting or a kneeling position. I am so glad that you joined me for today's practice. Hopefully you feel a little bit looser, a little bit stronger, a little bit um, more flexible or more mobile, right? For whatever the needs that you specifically have in your life. I am really um, hopeful that this is benefiting you to the max. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Again, my remote is out <laughs> so I have to do it manually but be well and stay wild.